and welcome to my presentation on federated sparkle query processing over heterogeneous linked data fragments. This is a work uh, done by me uh, in a joint collaboration with Maribela Costa from the Ruhr University in Bochum. So in, in recent years, we've seen that the number and the size of knowledge graphs that are published on the web has steadily increased, uh, here exemplified by the growth of the linked open data cloud. And at the same time, we also saw that there's new so-called linked data fragments being developed, which are web interfaces to query knowledge graphs. The idea here is that servers can provide different interfaces to access their data sets, allowing the clients to decide which interface better satisfies their need. And these interfaces, they differ regarding the expressivity. So which part of or fragment of Sparkle they support, the metadata they provide, their availability, and the cost for the client when evaluating Sparkle queries over those interfaces. And the combination of these two developments led us to the question, how can we query efficiently um, federations that have different types of interfaces, so-called heterogeneous uh, federations? So let's take a look at an example. Let's assume we want to retrieve American presidents, the political party they are a member of, as well as their predecessors and their successors. We can formulate this as a federated Sparkle query, and we can evaluate this over a heterogeneous federation. In this example, the public Sparkle endpoint of Wikidata and the triple pattern fragment server for DBpedia. Traditionally, what is done in federated query processing is so-called query decomposition to determine which parts of the queries should be evaluated at which of the sources. But the problem here is that these uh, traditional approaches, they assume all interfaces to be uh, very expressive. So to support the full fragment of Sparkle and some interfaces in heterogeneous federations may not be able to evaluate all the sub-expressions. In this example here, the triple pattern fragment server is only able to evaluate triple patterns, but not larger sub-expressions like basic graph patterns shown here in this example. And therefore, we need to extend existing approaches in order to be able to handle those heterogeneous federations efficiently. If we look into related work, we find that uh, there's a lot of work in uh, federations on homogeneous uh, interfaces. They mostly focus on Sparkle endpoints as the interface. Here we've seen index-free approaches, statistic-based approaches, and even adaptive approaches. On the other hand, in the area of heterogeneous federations, we've only seen a few works in that area. FedQPL with the logical, uh, a language for logical query plans, and Comunica as a client that is able to query uh, different types of interfaces but it does not consider their capabilities specifically when querying them. And that's why we propose an interface aware approach with our framework for federated query processing over heterogeneous linked data fragments. So what does our framework address? We address three main components, the query decomposition, query planning, and query execution. And our hypothesis is that interface aware strategies that consider the capabilities of the access interfaces enable efficient query processing of heterogeneous federations. So let's take a look at the three different components, starting with query decomposition. The query decomposition defines which parts, so which sub-expressions of a query should be evaluated at which source in the federation. However, since traditional approaches consider all interfaces to be equal, Sparkle endpoints, they do not consider the sources interface language. And some sub-expressions, as I mentioned before, may not be evaluatable at all sources. Therefore, we extend the definition and introduce the interface compliant evaluation of a query decomposition. And essentially what we do here is that we focus on evaluating all sub-expressions in the decomposition in an interface com compliant manner. That means that the sub-expressions are evaluated uh, in a way that they are compliant with the 
expressivity of the sources. Given a query, we can have a large variety of different query decompositions. And the question is, which decomposition should we choose? This is traditionally done by considering the answer completeness that should be maximized and while minimizing the decomposition cost or the cost for evaluating a decomposition. In order to assess answer completeness and to estimate it, we propose a new decomposition density measure. And it's based on the observation that an atomic decomposition, which evaluates each individual triple pattern at all relevant sources, will prove, uh, will provide complete answers. And then we compare the structure of any alternative decomposition to the structure of the atomic decomposition. And the more similar they are, the more likely this alternative decomposition is to produce complete answers uh, as well. But we do not choose the, this atomic very naive decomposition because it might be very costly. And this is reflected in our decomposition cost measure <clears throat> that estimates the runtime cost by considering the sources that are contacted and also considering how this uh, sub-expressions in the decomposition need to be uh, evaluated in an interface compliant way. Now, given a query decomposition, the next step is that we need to determine an efficient query plan that minimizes the execution time. And here also are some considerations that are specific to heterogeneous federations that we consider in our framework. The first one being join ordering with union expressions. And here the main challenge is that we need to estimate the number of intermediate results accurately for different types of interfaces. For example, if we have a Sparkle endpoint, we can actually use, for example, a count query to estimate, to get an estimate of the number of results. While for other interfaces like a triple pattern fragment server, the client needs to be able to evaluate or to estimate the number of immediate, intermediate results based on some more coarse grained metadata that the interface provides. Since the uh, expression here on the right cannot be evaluated directly by the triple pattern fragment server, the query planner also needs to be able to determine or to uh, generate interface compliant plans for the sub expressions. And in this case, for example, it would need to determine the join order for these three triple patterns in the query. And finally, it also needs to place the physical operators. In contrast to homogeneous federations, here the expressivity of the interfaces may enable or even require different physical operators. This uh, in includes access operators, but also join operators. So taking a closer look at the physical operators in the query execution, here we focus on interface-aware physical operators. The idea and the goal is that we want to leverage the sources capabilities with these interface aware operators. We consider, or what needs to be considered are two main operators. The first being the access operators that need to be able to handle different levels of expressivity of the interfaces. And also they need to implement the proper physical access methods to those interfaces. For example, if we have a triple pattern fragment service, the results will be uh, distributed over pay pages and the access operator needs to be able to retrieve the results from all the pages. In addition, considering join operators, here we may leverage the expressivity of the interfaces to reduce the number of requests that we need to send to the sources, which can then reduce the load on the sources and also the runtime of the evaluation of the query. And this completes the three aspects of the framework. And in order to understand how we can implement those uh, aspects or how we can use these considerations, we provide an illustration of the framework in our evaluation in our work, where we focus on the interface aware query planner and we propose an interface aware polymorphic bind join physical operator. In the interface aware query planner, it includes an approach for interface compliant query decomposition, a join ordering method, and it also is able to place 
interface compliant physical operators. The approach starts with uh, the query and then performs source selection. It then prunes sources that potentially do not contribute to the final answers of the query. It then generates an interface compliant de query decomposition for which it retrieves a join ordering and then places the physical operators. And among those physical operators is this new interface aware polymorphic bind join. And this operator aims to leverage the expressivity of the interfaces during query execution by adapting the number of bindings in the join. We then evaluate our approach, starting with a baseline, which is a naive approach that does not consider the expressivity of the interfaces. We considered what happens when we add our interface aware decomposer, if we also add our source pruning approach, and we also considered what is the impact of these new uh, interface aware polymorphic bind join operator. We focused on federations with three different types of interfaces, triple pattern fragment service, binding restricted triple pattern fragment service, and Sparkle endpoints. We used the commonly and well-known FedBench benchmark to set up two different heterogeneous federations. And these federations differ in the distribution of those three interfaces across the different data sources in order to understand how does this distribution also affect the performance. So taking a look first at adding our decomposer and adding our source pruning approach, we find that for the first federation, we're more than 14 times faster and uh, we only lose 3% of the answers. In the second approach, uh, se sorry, second federation, we're more than three times faster. And again, we only need to sacrifice 3% of the answers. What is uh, interesting here is to see that while the baseline differs quite strongly across the two federation, after applying our methods, we are in the same ballpark with respect to the runtime and the number of requests to the service. We also try to uh, understand how our density and our cost measure uh, reflects the runtime and the uh, answer completeness. And here we find that overall, the uh, measures reflect the execution time and the answer completeness. So our interface aware query planning enables more efficient query plans for heterogeneous federations. We then also took, took a closer look at these, the interface aware polymorphic bind join operator here indicated in yellow and red compared to the baseline in gray. We find that regarding the de-efficiency, the number of requests, the throughput and the runtime, we can improve the performance with this new operator. The only slight detrimental effect is observed in the time of retrieving the first solution to the query. But overall, in both federations, we see that this interface aware join operators improves the query execution efficiency. So in conclusion, we uh, contributed with three main contributions. The first being our framework for query processing over heterogeneous linked data fragments. The second being an illustration of the framework, including this new type of polymorphic join operator. And the third being an evaluation of a prototypical implementation of our approach. Overall, we find that it's worthwhile investigating these interface aware strategies that consider the capabilities of the interfaces as they enable more efficient query processing over heterogeneous federations. And we believe that this is a field that will be become more relevant in the future as there are more knowledge graphs and different types of interfaces becoming available. And we hope to provide a good foundation for future research in this area. Considering future work, we want to, uh, we want to uh, integrate existing uh, approaches for homogeneous federations and see how we need to adapt those. And we also want to integrate additional linked data fragment interfaces. Moreover, it is important to conduct more fine-grained evaluations with different types of federations and different benchmarks because we can, with the FedBench benchmark, we can only cover a small part 
of po potential federations and we need to understand how different factors will impact the performance uh, of the proposed solution. Here are the reference for today's presentation. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention and I'm glad to take your questions. Thank you very much for this uh, nice presentation. Any question from the audience? No questions? Help me. No. Okay, I will go. So, uh, in it's just related to what uh, your uh, in the conclusion and it's in your evaluation you use TPF pair TPF and uh, Sparkle endpoint. You are aware of our work about the uh, Sage interface with web preemption and all this stuff. Do you think that we can integrate Sage in your framework as a as a Sparkle endpoint? Mm, I, I think so. We just need to. Since Sage in, uh, includes the web preemption, we need to have an access operator that will be able to handle this uh, preemption. And then we can would be able to plug it into the, the framework as well and just treat it like a Sparkle endpoint and the access operator would handle this kind of communication stuff. And also for other interfaces that for example, like SmartKG um, provide this hybrid shipping approach where you can get parts of the data it would require adding um, or including a new access operator and also understanding and maybe uh, refining the query planning approach when to obtain the, the uh, data or when to send the query and so on. But in general, I think it will be possible to extend the framework with that regard. Okay. I no no question from the audience. I have last question. In your uh, evaluation, you should Show that the cost reflects the execution time. Uh, how it, it's really hard to have this. It's an open, still an open problem in database, and I wonder how you have this cost reflect execution time. Uh, that's that's true. We don't have a like we did not compute the correlation directly, but we see that if we estimate lower cost, we see better execution time. So it's not a perfect metric because. Uh, this metric would need to consider way more than just the sources contacted and to evaluate the expressions in an interface compliant way. Uh, but it gives us a good indication of the cost. It's not perfect, of course, um, but it could be also extended to include, for example, like for TPF, you need to do more requests if you have to paginate the results and requests are the most costly part. So you could try to include that and refine the cost model in that regard as well. 